Hey guys, Tim here, back for another Chicago Northwestern Harvard subdivision in N scale. We're currently looking at the local, picking up some empties off the Heller Lumber Spur, getting ready to couple them back to the train as a Metra is heading uh, westbound in the background. Uh, and as I'm about to show you, I'm really excited. We've able, I've been able to get quite a bit done this week uh, to update the layout. Now we didn't have an update last week, and that's because, as you can see from the clip I'm showing you here, I was decidedly out of town for work for the entire week. So I really missed the chance to, to get some hobby progress done, um, but it also kind of re-energized me and made it a little easier to get a lot done this week. So one thing uh, before I get into the hobby progress, I did pick up some reinforcements. Um, since I do have both Heller Lumber and then another lumber site that'll be on the second level, I wanted to get some, some center beam cars. And you can see here my goal is I wanted to make sure this spur was long enough that I could uh, pick up two empties and drop off two fresh loads and I got to get some loads to put on the center beams as well but I was happy to get that addition. Um, if you remember from the old layout uh, right before we decided it was time to move houses I had built another 4 by 3 section to add on um, and as in preparation for the next phase of what I'm working on with the layout I went ahead and and scrapped that you know that didn't have any track or anything on it so I just uh, took all the screws out and got it back down to its base parts because there's definitely some valuable stuff to use. So to, to recap kind of where we are, um, the sections in the dark green that you're seeing here on the plan are done as far as like lane track and basic wiring is concerned. So that you know the staging yard, um, the tracks that curve uh, out from the staging yard around down to uh, the start of what becomes the main line on the Harvard sub which basically starts uh, with that spur there to Heller Lumber. The pink that you're seeing, that is the lift-out section that crosses where the door is to get access to the back room. And then the main line continues on to where the Arlington Heights Metro Station is down through the rest of the finished area of the room. So it's my goal to get up to where you are seeing it on the layout right now. So... Um, so it was time to get back into design and construction phase. So I made sure to make my cuts for my dimensional lumber um, and I wanted to kind of size it up because I would have to do another angled cut. Uh, so that way you can see it here. I'm trying to make sure that it's, you know, the right, uh, the right distance uh, to match up with the angle, the 45 degree angle on the other side. So I was sizing it up to make sure that it all kind of fit appropriately. Um, and then I mounted it again. Uh, I mounted the, the back piece. I just screwed it straight into the studs on the other side of the drywall. Uh, and of course, checking to make sure uh, that it's keeping level the whole way through because this will connect directly to the next section that just keeps on following the wall. Um, and you can see here I'm sizing it up to make sure I did get the angle slightly off uh, just because uh, I had... I was about an inch and a half off on my on my measurement for width, which unfortunately then meant that those angled pieces weren't quite in sync, but it, it's, it was close enough that I was able to make it work. Uh, no problem, as you'll see. Uh, and then I put the legs down uh, to stabilize and make sure that it was level uh, that way as well. And then obviously uh, set the plywood down so that way I could get the foam and start working. So once I got the foam down on the far side, it was time to start working on the lift out section. Um, you can see what I did was I used um, some two by twos and two by fours to establish kind of the base that the lift out would, would rest on um, to make sure that it would be stable. Uh, then obviously I put you know the foam down and I used some clamps just to make sure it was nice and secure because to me it was critical to keep the foam as close to level with the two sides as possible. It didn't quite get there and, and I'll talk more about that, but close, certainly close enough. Uh, and then it came time, uh, you can see I put a piece of 1x4 there in the front to kind of stabilize it, uh, and I started laying the cork down um, to make sure that everything, you know, mapped out the way that I wanted it to, uh, and I kept uh, plotting out where I wanted the track to go onto the other side as well, because I wanted to make sure that everything was in good shape. You can see I'm, I've got the first piece of flex track down, and I'm, I'm putting a lot of weight on to make sure that it gets exactly to where I need it to be. Um, and then uh, I kept laying the flex track all the way through to the other side. You can see, or the, the cork, 
uh, flex track is coming, but you can see I made the cuts in the cork, uh, and I would eventually obviously have to make the cuts in the flex track, but I wanted to make sure that I had everything laid properly uh, and that everything was working before I did that. So before I, I cut any of the track, I got the uh, 400 train out uh, and I ran the consist over just you know to make sure that everything was was running and working smooth. Um, there's no real connections to worry about yet. It's just about making sure that everything is running smoothly, that the curves look good, they fit the radius that I had planned for them. You can see I'm just kind of backing it out and backing it back in. So there's there's no cuts yet. Um, there's no wire separate wiring I've had to do yet. I wanted to check first before I went to those steps because if the track's not aligned, it's not good. Um, this is the old uh, little uh, 12, 12 inch long kind of scenery that I uh, made two years ago and I decided I wanted to practice using the Dremel on this first. Uh, you can see here I practiced doing some cuts on this because I didn't want the first time that I used the Dremel on track to be on the actual layout proper. Um, but th this was the tool I was going to use to make the cuts uh, on the actual line itself. You can see here before I made the cuts I took some just kind of like almost finishing nails and I put them uh, and I glued them right next to the tracks uh, and then I went and soldered those nails to the tracks to make sure that there was no uh, movement on the part of the flex track after I made the cuts. And you can see it's a little bit messy because I didn't bother cleaning out the ties. I'll do that later. Um, but you can see here that I was able to, that this train's able to pretty freely run even though the cars were all backed up onto uh, the lift out section. And so you can see here, this is what it looks like with those cuts made. Um, I've got all the flex track there ready to go. Um, and then I need to worry about obviously getting it to continue on to the next side. You can see there's some shims there that I used because it wasn't quite level and so I just used some styrene to help balance that out. But again, I'm continuing to do tests uh, just to make sure that you know the trains are running smoothly over those cuts and there's no disruptions in the rails whatsoever. Uh, it dies, you can see it dies right there because I haven't wired it up yet. Um, so I went ahead and uh, wired up the lift out section um, and it was real easy. You know, I just installed some more terminals um, so that way everything would be wired and ready to go. And then what I ended up doing was I extended uh, the bus lines. I got some more 12 gauge wire. Um, and for now, I'm just using these inline WAGO connectors uh, before I figure out a more permanent solution uh, for how I want to connect the wiring between the layout and then the lift out section. So this is, it's easy enough for now in the short term. Um, and even for the long term, I could conceivably continue to do it that way until uh, I, I settle on how I want to finalize my wiring. So I went ahead and it was kind of the moment of truth time. I took the lift section out um, just to see, uh, because if, if I can't take this in and out, then there's no point. So you can see uh, what the what it looks like without the lift out. You can see those two by four braces right there um, that help stabilize it and make sure that it's good. I then put the, I put it back on. Uh, and this is the real moment of truth where I ran a train over it and it ran completely smooth, no problems. Um, and then obviously it dies because I haven't wired the other side of the lift out yet, but at this point when I was making the clip. Um, but you'll see, and I'm just gonna kind of nudge it with my hand to get it back onto a powered section so it runs back the other way. Uh, but you can see that they're, it's running great, nice and smooth. Um, those soldering the nails to the tracks really did the trick in terms of keeping the track nice and stable um, even after I took the lift out and put it back in. Um, so then it was time to get to my stopping point, um, which was basically the stretch. This is where Arlington Heights Station is going to be. So it's a nice long, about three feet long stretch of just straight track, no curves or anything. So I laid the flex track down um, as far as I wanted to get this week. And then uh, once I did that, it was time to run run things and see uh, how it was going. So you can see, you can see here. Here's that Metro train from the start of the video clip, just you know from another perspective. Um, see it running through, and it's kind of nice to have the amount of. I, I now have more running mainline than I did on the first version of the layout. Way more. 
uh, than the first version of the layout. And so obviously it's, uh, I still can't, you know, do continuous running yet because I've got a lot, a lot more layout to build uh, for that to happen. Um, but certainly it's uh, good enough and you can see the Metro train is running nice and smooth going over the, the lift out section right now and then uh, manages to get on to the rest of the layout nice and smooth as well uh, and make it all the way down to where uh, things end. And so again, it's just kind of nice. It was nice to get out then and, and run some trains. You can see I've got a, uh, a grain train. And again, I still got to power that frog. Uh, I've got a grain uh, coming down from the interchange with the MR and T. And you're going to see the 400 zip by here on the center track here in just a minute. And again, it's just nice to be able to run trains at various speeds. Uh, this is a pretty long grain train, as you can see, because I finally have the tracks to do it, which is super nice. Uh, and this will be kind of where I close things off. You know, it's a little bit of a shorter update, but definitely got a lot done. Um, next week, I'm hoping to then work on backdrop, uh, start uh, putting in the, the pieces for uh, where I want the backdrop to go, um, and uh, get the next section potentially built. Um, and we'll see what happens from there. So it was good to be back after taking a week off, got a lot of things done, really happy with the progress. Um, and even with all the progress, I'm still trying to take it nice and slow. You know, I'm only doing the track and the wiring right now. Um, but eventually I do want to start sprinkling in some hobby, some scenery. Uh, so that way it's not just trains running past pink foam. I want to have a little bit more than that. Uh, and I don't want to wait until I have the entire first level done because that's going to take a while. But that's all for now. Thanks again uh, for everybody who's tuning in and watching and commenting and following and subscribing. It really does mean a lot. Uh, and I'll post another update soon.